Presenter is uh, Dr. Soheer Malik, who is a technical team leader at Climate Resource Coordination Center in Pakistan. Dr. Suhail has over 40 years experience, including 15 years in senior leadership roles in steering uh, inter non-governmental, bilateral, multilateral, private and public sector operation. He has managed multi-sector complex projects in sustainable development, poverty alleviation, climate change, and financial services, and is well versed with all aspects of the project life cycles of international financial institutions. Dr. Suhail has also worked at the Green Climate Fund during its embryonic stage as the head of the portfolio management. In this role, he was responsible for leading the quality assurance at uh, entry of about 100 climate funding and 125 readiness pro uh, proposal. Over to you, uh, Dr. Suhail. Thank you very much, Dr. Homa. Let me put on my presentation. Help me. The, the final, final one. The final, final one? Yeah. So uh, now we are going to double down to the project level. And a lot of uh, discussions have started at the project level. So I, I would like to really kind of interact with you guys personally. So I mean, how many of you worked in, in climate uh, change projects? All of you or few? Good, good. We, we, we have people who have worked in climate change projects. Um, I, I would like to kind of start, a lot of things have been covered in the earlier presentations, the context in detail, everything has been covered, but I mean, how would you see a climate project different than a development project? They have been covered earlier, so it's not a million dollar question. I mean, how do you see a climate project different than a development project? If somebody can tell me one, two, three reasons. Anybody has any, uh, any idea on that? Different, it's a difficult question. Different, how is climate change project different? See, let me give you a hint. One, uh, there was a mention about climate rationale. Now, in development projects, you don't need a specific rationale which runs across the entire project. Each one of us has worked on projects. Projects start with objectives, projects go through the, um, the, the, the whole actions, the budget, the monitoring and evaluation. It's a standard project proposal. In climate project, the line which runs through from the start to the end is climate rationale. If you don't have a strong climate rationale, it's not a climate project. So, uh, I mean, let's not uh, mix the things. Now, the other thing is that climate um, uh, change or climate projects are seen as separate pockets. No, this myth has to be broken because we have moved a uh, uh, lot of journey we uh, we have moved from um i mean if you start we have moved from uh, from environment uh, each one of us must have worked in environment one way or the other then to sustainable development and then to climate so it's a, it's an add up it's an add on so now what you see is that the agenda is moving from sustainable development not to a different agenda. It's bringing together all the things together. And I'll show you on the slide that how does it come together? How does the sustainable development climate change agenda merge? And then you will understand that it is not rocket science. I, I'm not a climate uh, scientist. I'm not a climate specialist. I'm a civil engineer by training. But it, it's all about logic. It's all about flow. It's all about build up. So this is, uh, this is something which we need to understand. Now, you have heard about uh, one uh, million ton of carbon dioxide. What does it represent? You have heard about it, that one empty carbon dioxide emission. What is it? I mean, everyone talks about 100, uh, 100 tons of carbon dioxide emission. You know what is it? It's very simple. If you have been to US, you take a car, rent a car, you go from New York to Las, uh, Las Vegas, and you, burn, you, you have emitted one ton of carbon dioxide. Simple. 
don't have to get into complications, no formulas, nothing. So if you drive a car, rent a car, that car will emit one ton of carbon dioxide from New York to Las, Las Vegas. If you're, I mean, I'm not a better, but people do love to go to Las Vegas. I'm just saying that. So, I mean, uh, this is the, just to depict that. So now if I, if I get on with my, because I have to finish my presentation also at the same time, um, I hope I can move this from this distance. I, I cannot. Thank you, sorry. So I've already spent 0 0.001 million ton of carbon dioxide. So that's it. So I'll be covering the global climate finance architecture. And uh, this is the agenda I'll be covering. I'll be uh, covering that what does the context mean? What are there? Then I'll talk about climate rationale, the investment criteria, and you will in the end find out that um, I mean, what is the difference or how do you develop a, a climate change proposal? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is something which either I don't know how to operate it or <laughs> this one. So, I mean, we, we understand that climate finance from the earlier presentation that it is central to achieving uh, climate resilient development, low carbon climate resilient. Now, this is, uh, this is what I said from sustainable development to low carbon and carbon resilient. Now, these two words represent adaptation and mitigation. So, whenever we have a climate change project, these are the only two things, two objectives which we will have adaptation and mitigation. The second one is that global climate finance architecture is complex. We have heard about it. I mean, we have, we have seen in the presentation, it's not an easy uh, construct. It is quite complex. So that's why uh, the access to it, people kind of uh, take a lot of time. In Egypt, you have uh, just uh, GCF, Green Climate Fund has a very less kind of a uh, financing here because it takes time to access the finance. The fund flows uh, through multilateral and bilateral, as well as through regional and, uh, and national funds. So climate change funds or climate finance funds flows from all those, uh, as, uh, 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 as was mentioned earlier in the earlier presentation by Khurram, uh, Dr. Khurram. So there's no agreed definition of what it constitutes, what constitutes a climate finance. So if it's not an agreed definition, then it makes monitoring difficult. I mean, monitoring is what you measure and what you report or result, what you report. And the final is the, the, uh, the wide range of, um, I mean, mechanisms uh, continue to challenge uh, coordination because every different, I mean, you, you'll have Jeff, you will have adaptation fund, you will have climate change. This has been an old issue with donor harmonization and, and having one, for example, accreditation. Accreditation, they will have different accreditations for different funds, so it's very difficult to get accredited even. So, I mean, th th that's really the issue. When we come to developing countries, the question was asked that why, uh, why can't we really uh, get into the adaptation? We'll come to that uh, specifically on the adaptation. The developing countries lack capacity to access international climate fund. I have mentioned this global shift from development finance to climate finance because it, it, this has taken place. And you know, our governments in the developing countries, they are complacent. They would like to walk into a, a multilateral uh, bank and get the money. It's easy money. But climate finance has mentioned earlier, it's competitive. It cannot be just, you can't go and get it. Why? Because when I ask the question, what is climate, why is climate finance different? Climate finance talks about risk taking, whereas development projects don't. They, they run away from risk. Climate finance takes the risk. Wherever the risk is, climate finance works. So that's where you really, if you see a risky project, and there was a mention about private sector by, uh, by, by Dr. Manal even, that what is the reason the private sector is not uh, kind of uh, getting the same um, leverage as it should. 
climate finance understands the ambitions are very high. I mean, you talk about trillion of dollars. This is a very high ambition. When you talk about the needs of uh, the current times, these ambitions are very high. So this delta, public sector cannot cover. They can go on for 100 years giving money, but they cannot, they cannot uh, finance uh, or they cannot mitigate adaptation or uh, mitigation. Private sector is inevitable to come in. So you can't just, uh, private sector cannot stay away. I will come in my second session, I'll talk about the challenges what private sector has in, 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 in bringing in climate finance. I will, I'll talk about it later. So that is something which, which is there. The development projects designed by MDBs for, for the countries. Now, this is another thing that development projects in our countries, uh, mo mostly they are designed by the MDBs themselves. We have, uh, I mean, uh, we just take their uh, proposal and design and we get the money for that. Whereas climate finance projects have to be done from, from the country itself. Then the, finally, the climate finance, uh, 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 I mean, it is really allocated through competitive, it's, it's mentioned before, that, that's not, a, I mean, that's been done. But you understand competitive or, or no, because in, in MDBs or others, it's just if you ask for financing, there's no competition. If the project uh, is one of the criteria areas, they will give you the finance and it's all about money. And here in climate finance, you have to really prove that you are, uh, you are uh, really going for the, um, for the targets of adaptation or mitigation. So, I mean, I'll skip this because I think we are, uh, we, we have to uh, kind of move forward. Um, then we, I mean, uh, setting the context, it's limited climate finance. I mean, if, if, if it is limited, then, I mean, uh, the, then we cannot have this um, a low carbon and cl climate resilient development. And uh, fund flow, we have mentioned earlier, this comes into the global challenge. And no agreed definition, it's mentioned, architecture complex, it's mentioned. So that goes there. And then when you look at the local, there is a low re realization of global shift from development. And government inclined towards traditional finance, as I mentioned, they would love to go for easy way, just get a loan from ADB or World Bank or any other regional bank. And that's it. And uh, your your purpose is served. They don't want to really uh, put a lot of effort in 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 mitigating the climate issues. And uh, this we have mentioned already. Now this is something which I want you to uh, just take a minute to understand. When I mention that sustainable development and climate change agenda cannot move separately, there is a reason behind it. If you can understand this cycle. On the right hand side, it is the sustainable development domain. And each of our countries are working in this domain where you have the human and natural systems and where you have the socioeconomic development paths. So we have been doing it for now decades that we have been working on the food, water, health, and we have also been working on the economic growth, technology, population, and all those things. So this this side is sustainable development. Now, what happens is that this really, the socioeconomic development part of it, it creates the, uh, the, the issues to, the, the, to, to climate. It, it has emissions. It has a cost. That's what, what was mentioned earlier. Now, that emissions, they, uh, they disturb the climate system. There's temperature rise and all those other factors. And then they affect the health, they affect, uh, there are floods, there are droughts. So that part is affected and then the other part gets affected because the, the point I'm trying to make is that till now we have been designing projects and programs, excuse me. <clears throat> we have been designing, mostly we have been investing, the countries have been investing in the sustainable development domains. But the point you have to understand is that no matter what project do you invest in, you have to be aware of the risks involved. And we mitigate the risks in every project. We try to make sure that the risks are covered in all the projects. What we miss out is the climate risk in our projects. If we miss out on the climate risk, it has a, uh, it, it, it has a double impact. I mean, your, your project cannot be viable 
if you if you ignore the second part that is the climate uh, climate domain part so please this this is one slide if i have to put one slide in there this you have to understand that we have to move toward an integrated climate change sustainable development strategic approach and uh, and if there is any question on this slide i would i would like to pause and 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 uh, kind of if there is a question i would like to answer because for me this is a central slide uh, because if you can understand what is the relationship between sustainable development and climate then the then half of the puzzle is solved i i hope you 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 can understand this uh, cyclic uh, approach please How many times do you think that uh, a development project can be compatible with the climate domain? Uh, for example, there, there would be many objectives of any development uh, project, and you want to have a com uh, the compatibility with the, the climate domain. Um, maybe there would be some chances of uh, it's affecting the development project. Is there any possibility that if you consider the climate domain, uh, to be included in the development project. It's so that's 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 what I will be coming to. The issue is that any activity which takes place on the right side in any of those squares, it will automatically have a uh, uh, have an impact on the climate itself. If you are carrying out, let's say, each and every developing country has a right to to develop, to to industrialize, to 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 uh, to improve their economic development. But in that right, uh, the question will go back to adaptation, what was asked from our Sudanese uh, participant, that no matter your emissions are less, but whatever projects you do in the sustainable development domain has this churning effect. You may not like it or you like it. This would have an impact on the climate. So if you, I mean, you may be contributing just a decimal point of it, and the others may be contributing more, but your uh, uh, your urge to move up on the industrialization, on on other uh, the the socio-economic development pathways would result or would result into emissions, and that's why this relationship between socio-economic development paths um, uh, quadrant and the GHG emissions is mitigation. If you look at it, the relationship is mitigation, and if you look at the top one where the effects come in through droughts and through flooding that is adaptation so automatically you provide a link that this is not coming the floods and the droughts are not coming just uh, like that it has been a result of a global activity which has resulted into this uh, I, I can say a climate mess or a climate uh, uh, a climate uh, emergency so we cannot we cannot separate that adaptation we do it mitigation developed countries do it Whatever development, either we say we don't do with the social economic development, we don't want to do it. If we become like purely organic, natural, everything, then you have the right to say we don't emit anything. We are not following that pathway, the pathway of development. And so we don't want to have mitigation. We want to have adaptation. And uh, to answer your question, even GCF, because I work for GCF, it has the objective of 50-50 adaptation and 50 Person mitigation. So they are not there, but they are moving towards that. So that I'm sorry, did I answer the question or not? Partially, but to some extent. Okay, good. Any other question on this? Uh, the the other one. I mean the. I think I I kind of pushed the button too far. So if we don't have any question on that, uh, the central diagram, which I mentioned, then then I can move because this is really, it, it sets the context. So if you all kind of understand that there is a integrated uh, uh, kind of an approach, we need to really be very clear why it is required and why it should be followed, please. As you know, the UN uh, definition for the sustainable uh, development has 17 uh, goals. But here we see that uh, there are uh, less than, uh, I think, 10 goals. 
are they linked with the climate change or uh, you used uh, another uh, definition for the sustainable uh, development goal? Thank you. Uh, 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 this is not sustainable development goals, by the way. And uh, this is not all sectors. I mean, this is just uh, an illustration that if you're working in human and natural system domain, this, these are illustrative. So it may have more sectors in there. And likewise, in socioeconomic development paths, there may be others also. So we are not talking about SDGs. SDGs are goals. Sustainable development is talking about that triangle, the famous triangle where you talk about social, economic, and uh, environment. That triangle where the heart is in sustainable development. So it's not on, on the goals itself. But it will, if you, if you fulfill that, it will contribute to the sustainable development goals. For the energy, uh, for example, for the energy, I think it's uh, supposed to be under the mitigation, for example, the social economic development goal. But there is the energy here? Yeah. For economic growth, or, and you go down. Oh, there there is an energy. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, please. Any other question or we move on? Thank you. So what we see is that, now this is another difference. Now I, I, I point out the difference between a classical development project and climate project. In, 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 a, in a development project, you start from input, output, action, outcome, impact. And then you say to yourself that if you've done the input, output, we leave to God the outcome and the impact. So we, we take away the responsibility that that's beyond our control. Whereas the climate projects would start from the impact. They would really be focusing on the impact part of it. They will not come from the bottoms up where you have the actions and all that. They will talk about where is the transformational shift. And that's why I put that in the figure. Where is the transformational shift from a socioeconomical development pathway, which we all have been following, towards an integrated climate change sustainable development thing? Now, if we come down, if you look at the outcomes, I'm coming down now. You, you, when you do the project, you will come up. But just to give an understanding that in climate projects, we do the, we go from the impact point of view because the ambition is so high that we cannot remain at the activity level. If we remain at the activity level, we may not be able to go, get even halfway to the ambition. What to talk about closer to the ambition. So what you need is climate driven development anchored in all interventions. Now that was, I think the earlier point that it, it cannot be, it cannot remain separate. It has remained separate till now. As an environment, that environment was seen as a very separate subject. You try to mainstream it, but climate driven development should be anchored in all interventions, programs and projects. Likewisely, climate finance understood and unlocked to address the needs of the country. Now, this is the issue. If we cannot understand our climate problems or issues, we will remain half on the darker side. We will not be able to cover the projects in a, in a holistic manner. So we, if we need to cover the projects in a holistic manner, we need to have the, a very sound understanding while developing the climate, uh, uh, climate proposals, as rightly said by uh, Huram and others, that this understanding is a given. If you can't understand it, you will see that it will come to you later. So that means that design interventions are there, focused design interventions are there at output level to secure climate funding. And on the other hand, now what we are doing now is the second part of it. We are having a, uh, we are facilitating climate finance discourse, discussion, trying to understand as, as a group that what does it entail? This needs to be done also because our planners, our our government officials, our private sector, our public sector needs to have this understanding or through a discourse. We have to have this kind of a, uh, of a fora where you discuss all different dimensions of climate finance and how the proposals are developed. And then if you get to the activities level, this is the objective of our workshop, Bankable Projects Pipeline for Climate Action. So even if we start from the, uh, from the output level, we still, get to the impact, but you get a, I hope you get this uh, rationale 
of uh, this theory of change. This is called theory of change in your, uh, in your proposals. If you want to put a theory of change, this is the theory of change. And this is where you have to have the understanding. You have to have design interventions. You have to facilitate capacity, as was mentioned earlier. And you have to lead the conversation. Each one of us has to become champions, ultimately, inshallah, to, to, to really uh, explain to the rest of our planners what does climate finance entail? How can we fight the issue? So, so this is the kind of uh, um, uh, going forward, the theory of change for, the, uh, for our climate. Pro this is a very standard kind of a thing, but it gives a framework for that. So um, now coming to designing climate change project, you need to have uh, conceptual framing, which you will do it in any project. In, in there, you have to have climate rational. As I mentioned, this is a must. I mean, I take it, if you have watched series, movies, everything, it's like writing a script. Now, rational, climate rational is writing a script where a kid can understand that what are you talking about? How is it related to the, uh, to the, uh, to the disaster? How can, it, uh, how can it mitigate the disaster or it can adapt to the disaster? So this is what Khurram was saying earlier also. Then you, these are the other ones are project, uh, normal project things that you have fiduciary obligations. Now this may seem very simple and classical to all projects that you have uh, um, financial structuring, economic and financial modeling. But I tell you one thing, in a development project, you will have financial concerns, internal rate of return. And if you go maximum, you'll go EIRR economic internal rate of return. In climate projects, they don't care about financial return. If, if it doesn't make a financial case, it doesn't stop there because the risk element has to be covered. For that, you have to have economic sense, not uh, all the time the financial sense. So I'm just trying to kind of put it in a perspective that the proposal should be covering the sense of the program. Then you have the legal requirements, which is, uh, which is there in all, almost all the things, but compliance is also, again, something which we need to, these are standard compliance requirements in a climate change proposal, where you have environmental and social assessments, gender assessment, integrity framework. Now you, UN has added so many other things. I mean, uh, anti-money laundering and all those kind of things. You have to really bring those, all those things into the project proposal. And then, of course, in that, it's the reporting which matters. <clears throat> now, coming to the adaptation. Now, when you are thinking about a project, I mean, let's say uh, we are thinking about a climate change project. If it's an adaptation project, it should demonstrate its, uh, its ability to adopt the climate change impacts. If you cannot demonstrate that, I mean, you can, you can say, I have a water harvesting project. I've done a lot in Sudan with Islamic Development Bank. I've done a lot of uh, rain ha harvest uh, projects, but I mean, they stand at a certain level, but they don't go much more in depth that how does it mitigate to the climate change effects. So then you bring the holistic form in the context of promoting sustainable development. Sustainable development is there and paradigm shift by providing evidence-based analysis to show effective adaptive response. In mitigation, the project has to, to show its ability to demonstrate its potential to limit and reduce the emissions in the context of private sector. And these would not have happened without climate funding. You cannot put a proposal saying that uh, this company wants to do this, but if they can do it in normal business, why should it be treated as a climate change? It has to have its additionality. It has to have a, a, a reason why it, uh, why it is required. And now coming to the climate rationale, Climate rationale is the overarching narrative of the climate change project that it addresses climate change and thus contributes to the climate funding investment criteria. So it, it introduces the word investment criteria. Now investment criteria will carry all those magic words which a climate proposal should, should cover. So I'm, I'm trying to, this is like a, if you go to a university, it's a 101 course and I'm trying to cover it in 30 minutes. <laughs> a course which can be covered in a semester. Uh, I mean, I can be teaching this in, in a full semester one. So what is, uh, I mean, if you look at the climate rational principles, uh, let's not get, go in too much into the detail, but it, they are really aligned with the Paris Agreement. 
they are aligned uh, with uh, with the i mean they talk about adaptation planning should ensure stakeholder involvement now each one of us if you have done development projects i've done it for 30 years we use stakeholders uh, participation as a checklist done 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 and in real sense we have not involved the stakeholders in the climate project you cannot do a project without stakeholder the reason i'm saying is that just if you're doing only public sector projects and if you're doing a private sector project private sector project if you for example if you're doing it for a export for exporters because tomorrow you will slap uh, more taxes uh, if they are in in 2024 they are going to have gsp plus which will slap taxes on any export production which does not comply with climate change or eco friendly products so these things have to be uh, really the stakeholders have to understand stakeholders are who who are producing who are the manufacturers who are doing the leather work who are doing the garment work they have to understand that their products will become non competitive or they, uh, when in 2024 if they don't follow the climate change uh, issues uh, i mean they don't comply with those I mean, those I cannot go into details because it's a long detail that if you want to comply with climate change things, you, you can't do that. So in the identification, it's important, uh, the issue that how the project relates and seeks to address current and future project projected climate risk. It's very easy said than done because uh, somebody mentioned data. I think you mentioned data. There, uh, we'll come to that in the challenges in the next session. It is the key challenge. You don't have any data or not any data, but less data. How has the specific climate change hazard led or will lead to the specific risk impact? Now, this is something which has to be very specific. If you're doing an adaptation project, you have to make sure that you relate it to a certain risk or a certain climate uh, impact which you want to do it. And what would be your response? How the climate project will reduce risk caused by climate change? and thus reduce impact. So these are the data uh, just mentioned, alignment with the country priorities, not with the funding priorities. It's your own priorities, NDCs, which you have made the commitments, NAPAs, the, the, the other uh, strategic documents in climate change, you made it. You have to make sure that they are aligned with it. And MNE is definitely, the, uh, when you come to adaptation uh, or mitigation, in mitigation, it's MRV because there you have to verify also that emissions are measured and they are reported. Uh, so this is adaptation. Now coming to mitigation, alignment is the same methodology. You have to quantify the, the, the emissions and monitoring and reporting. You have to describe how and, uh, and verify that uh, how did you establish the reductions, the, the emission reductions. I'm sorry, I'm moving a little fast. It became, it can become a little heavy on the technical side. And this is not kind of a presentation I should be making in late afternoon or even, I mean, the, at the end, but uh, that's how we are structured. So uh, I have, uh, now this is very important. The investment criteria, this provides a framework for the climate change proposal. If you can satisfy these five items, uh, sorry, six items, your proposal is developed. You don't need to really, get going on anything. You have to kind of, uh, in your proposal, talk about paradigm shift, the transformational change I was talking about, the transformation shift. Degree to which the project can catalyze impact beyond a one-off project investment, that if you're doing a project, how much it can impact or it can have an impact beyond the project life. And uh, I mean, if you go and uh, a development project, if you go and analyze it after three years or Evaluate it, not analyze, evaluate it. You will not find even the PMU there. No staff there, nobody there. It just evaporates. The project comes in, it's a, for the project life, and that's it. It ends when the, once the project funds uh, go out. The impact potential, how the project contributes to the funds, uh, uh, funding entities' objectives. And those, mind you, the objectives are very clear. Two objectives, adaptation and mitigation. The, I mean, the emissions and how many people you have uh, I mean, you have helped. The third is country ownership. Again, I have mentioned this, that it should be aligned with the country's, uh, country's uh, strategic approaches and all that, and DCs. This one is important, needs of recipients, how the project addresses economic and social development level of the country and the affected population. So 
This looks simple, but when you start to design the project, then you have to make sure that it, it does happen. And efficiency and effectiveness, now this is also important because now it gives sense that how much does it cost per ton of carbon dioxide emission? I mean, if you are having a project which is costing $1,000 per ton and the other project is costing 20, there's a hell of a difference. So the efficiency and the effectiveness should be there. Then the sustainable development part is the final one where wider benefits and priorities of the project, what you were talking about, sir, SDG goals. Now this comes in as a part of the investment criteria that the SDG goals need to be linked with. When you, when you drop the program, you cannot have a program without SDG goals. All climate proposals have to have uh, this core benefit, they call it, to the SDG goals. So this is where it comes into six things are done. So now we move to the key features. Simple, these are all, I, I won't go into details, project description, theory of change, impact potential. I, I can take up each and every one, but it takes more time. But it really, I'll be repeating and I'll be adding more details, more uh, spice to the issue. The dish will become definitely much, much better. But uh, I mean, I, I, it's just like that. So <clears throat> I'll quickly, this, these are my last two slides. I'll, I'll just inform you about the uh, process uh, in a climate proposal because people get scared that what is, what is there? What does it entail in a... <clears throat> in a concept uh, development and how does the project gets approved. This is a climate change projects, development and approval process, standard in most of the uh, uh, climate financing. It's standard that you have to have the first the concept development, uh, concept uh, developed, you then develop the full project. The, the climate fund or facility has an internal review, submitted to the board, approved. It's a very simple, I mean, this. It looks simple, but if you look at the timeline below, it's not showing. It can take you about nine months to a year minimum to, to go through this process. Now, I mean, if I look at the, uh, the proposal development quickly, that proposal development is you, you, you get the climate context done in the beginning, the baseline. You have the evaluation report, pre-feasibility or feasibility. And then I mentioned stakeholder engagement. This is important engagement with the stakeholders and then alignment, the, the refined project components, theory of change, and then environmental and social screening. But these, this is all quickly on the, um, if you talk about the development and approval process, thank you very much for your patient viewing. And if you have any questions, I'm still here to answer those questions.